child of god you are blessed my name is paula welcome to faith in five we are discussing the healing power of almighty god through the son and his precious blood jesus christ i want to touch on an area a characteristic mannerism personality of god pertaining to the area of healing that people deny they don't understand they misinterpret and they don't believe so it's a really sensitive touchy area and we're going to read a story really quickly i'm going to show you where the same god who has the power authority and authorization to heal you only he can do that is the same god who injures and here's why let's look at the story taken from the book of john chapters 9 reading from verses 1 till 11. as he went along jesus he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, Rabbi which means teacher, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus. But this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. So she, that is saying clearly that God can cause things to happen, allow things to happen that may appear to look ugly or bad in order to glorify himself and show for the manifestation of his power and glory in the area of healing deliverance. Oh yeah. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. So Jesus is saying, the father sent me. As long as it is day, we must work diligently doing the Father's work. And Jesus meant he's doing it and also you can. You are doing it. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. I give light to those who are in darkness and blind, to those who cannot see their way, to those who don't have salvation. And in the same way, the Spirit of God is inside of you. Jesus left the demonstration and now you are to give light to the world in the area of the ministry of healing. Look at this. Having said this, he spit on the ground. Wow. Made some mud with the saliva and put it on the man's eyes. That's very intriguing and interesting. I just want to say something about that. Remember, man was formed out of the dust of the earth. So it's very um, sensible there. And, you know, it was very... Um, <laughs> um, very uh, suitable for Jesus to do something like that. Let's look at verse 7. Go, he told him, he told the man, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means sent. So the pool of Siloam, Siloam actually means to be sent. So Jesus sent him, he said, go and wash now in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. So now he has eyesight for the first time in his life. He was born blind and now he's seeing. Wow, what a happy man. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this man the same man who used to, to sit and beg? So the neighbors were accustomed to seeing this man begging all the time because he can't work, he can't do anything, he's blind, you know. Some claimed that he was, others said, No, it can't be him. Remember, people are accustomed to seeing you a certain way all your life. They're saying, Wow, is this you now? Wow, with the radiance you are seeing, you are healed, you are delivered. They couldn't believe it. Others said, no, he only looks like him. You see, people, I tell you, sometimes people will never recognize you in your healed, delivered state of position because they are so accustomed to seeing you in your dumb, defeated, and hell-bent suffering position. And that's a problem here all the time, you know. But he himself insisted, I am the man who was born blind. Now I can see. Look at this. Verse 10. How then were your eyes opened? They demanded. They say, how did this happen? He replied, the man they called Jesus. And I love this part here. The man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam. I'm sending you and wash your, yourself. Wash your face. So I went and washed and then I could see. Let's look at the scripture reading taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, 39. Remember, I'm talking to you about the God with all the healing power, Almighty God himself, giving us access in the earth through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ, to do signs, wonders, and miracles, and perform great, 
miraculous miracles i have laid hands on people over the years numerous countless times and they receive healing probably some of you are looking at me your preachers ministers and you do the same look at it hallelujah watch deuteronomy chapter 32 and verse 39 see now that i myself am he there is no god besides me i put to death remember i told you he's the same god that injures and i bring to life I have wounded and I will heal. You see? Remember I also told you firmly that God does certain things. That his name be lifted up and glorified. His demonstration will be performed all about the earth when he does something. Okay? So I have wounded and I will heal. God is saying I have wounded. I'm the one who bring about. Who, whether you say permit it or allow it. I'm the one who wounds and I will heal. And no one can deliver out of my hand. Meaning, whatever I choose to do with a person, I am God Almighty, you cannot escape. Wow. So I can do the performance of a sufferation upon your life and I could do the performance of lifting you up because I can testify that's what he did with me. I could do the performance of lifting you up for my name's sake that you may bring, bring glory to my name all around the earth. You want to write notes, take this down. God Almighty, He alone has the authorization to take life and give it. Job said when he was suffering, God, God uh, allowed it to happen. To prove a point to the devil. You remember that story, right? And Job said, he said, the, the it was Job, I believe, yeah. He said, the Lord give it. And the Lord takes away. The Lord is the one who gives and he's the one who takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Wow. He he wound he, wound is not but his wounding may not be a deliberate act with a wrong motive. No, you can't find wrong motive in God, but has a good purpose in it. So when he does something that you don't like, it's not because his motive is wrong. He has a good purpose in it. Now look at this. For he wounds, but he also binds up. Okay, he also injures. He is the one who, he, for he wounds, but he also binds up. He, he will also heal that wound. He injures, but his hands also heal. Job said it again, chapters 5 and verse 18. The Lord will strike Egypt. Now, what does Egypt mean? I say time and again, it's a representation of the world and a spiritual meaning, referring to the world and all its sinful pleasures. And he said here, the Lord will strike Egypt with a plague. You see, remember I was telling you that God is the one who authorizes and sanctions the releasing of plagues into the earth. Why? Because there is a purging that needs to take place. People need to come to a repentance point. How do you make people come to a repentance point? By pressing them down with some pressure. I bet you, you better believe it. Wow. He will strike them and heal them. They will turn to the Lord, you see, under that pressure, and he will respond to their pleas and heal them. You want to write this down. Number two, God Almighty, he alone bind up your wounds. He alone can bind up your wounds. The hand of God will heal you, can heal you. Number three point, Egypt, the spiritual representation of the worldly sin and its pleasure. Pleasures. God authorizes plagues. He brings to deliverance and heals causing you to suffer and humble so you will turn to him and be healed. I tell you, hell is worse off and a place that he does not want you to go. So it is better for him to correct you in this day and this hour instead of you ending up for all eternity in hell. Wow, and we're closing with this scripture. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but he will heal us, you see? He's the one who does the tearing apart. He has injured us, but he will bind up our wounds after Two days, he will revive us on the third day. He will restore us that we may live in his presence. Taken from book of Hosea, chapter 6, verses 1 to 2. And that is prophetically referring to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. That last part we read there, it was a prophetic word. Because Jesus was um, raised from the dead after three days. Amen, beloved. And you want to write this down, when you, f when you feel in pieces it, very well could be the hand of God tearing you apart in order to heal you. Resurrection power will visit, but only after things are dead. Be blessed until we meet again. I love you. Share this with someone.